Welcome back to the Smarter Marketer podcast, brought to you by Rocket Agency. I'm your host, James Lawrence. Welcome back to the Smarter Marketer podcast. Today, I am joined by Brittany Smith. Britt, welcome to the pod. Thank you. Good excellent to, be here. to have Yes, good, good. It is excellent to have you here. So, Britt is currently Senior Account Manager at Rocket, but more relevant to this conversation, she's the head of the Rocket Academy. The Rocket Academy is Rocket's intern and grad program where, where we identify identify a higher mentor and train junior marketers in the skills and knowledge that they need to become successful career marketers. Prior to Rocket, Britt was account manager at The Crew, which is a boutique brand communications agency specializing in the hospitality industry. So Britt, welcome to the pod. Thank you. It's, um, so we're here to talk about how to identify our, ide- why do I keep saying identify, our, <laughs> identify, <laughs> hire and retain great junior marketers, um, something which you've had such an instrumental role at the agency over the last kind of 18 months in doing. So I think just as a starting point, like what is the Rocket Academy and how did it come about? Yeah, so the Rocket Academy, as you said earlier, is our graduate program, essentially, and that kicked off back in May 2021 is when we onboarded our first few graduates and interns at the time, and I guess it came about from discussions within the agency where we were having challenges hiring mid-weight or more senior marketers, and some of those hires were falling through, and we were trying to figure out a way to I guess, build up our own talent pool and make sure that we were guaranteed in the future for great staff and that they would be, you know, part of Rocket and they would in, have Rocket's, um, what we required in terms of skill set. So it can be a bit tricky when you do have midweights coming in and they already have previous experience and they want to do things a certain way. So we thought we'd pilot a program, well, the leadership team did, and then I got offered to drive that initiative. And so it was a really interesting process at the beginning because we were also testing a new recruitment process, which was group interviews versus doing one-on-one interviews. And it was a great way to get a big group of graduates and uni students in the one room, see how they interacted with each other and just do a variety of different, I guess, small exercises and then one-on-one speed interviews to pick a handful of people to join the program. Yeah. So, I think it's, yeah. yeah. And I think today wanting to just what's and all, isn't it? Like what has worked, what hasn't worked. I think we've, yeah. Um, kind of what 18 months in now um, and we've had initiatives over the years as well probably less structured in terms of hiring grads and so I think there are some really good insights for for listeners to the pod Um, and I guess we're kind of lucky in the sense that we we kicked the program off probably prior to the real crunch in talent in Australia so probably it wasn't in a kind of luckily it wasn't a knee-jerk reaction to that and we've kind of fortunately had good people coming through the agency before yeah. that crunch kind of hit earlier this year. So I guess um what has like what didn't work initially? Because we did have some kind of fits yeah. and starts, I guess. So the 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 program itself definitely evolved pretty quickly. So our initial hires, we were hiring people part-time, we were hiring graduates, so people who had finished uni and then also uni students. And the program was actually designed to have people just all those graduates just floating within the company to help us fill capacity issues within teams. So what that meant is every day I would start my work day and ask different teams if they needed a hand with something and then delegate that work. Wasn't very efficient, wasn't a great use of my time. And it also meant that the grads or interns were fairly scattered. They weren't necessarily learning specific skills. They were just floating within those teams and So that didn't work and we worked that out pretty quickly that we needed people to be in specific roles, training in that area of the business. And then the grad program's role in their career would be to help bridge that gap between uni and full-time work. So Mm -hmm. after about three months, we, we pretty much overhauled the structure of the program. And then since then, we've been running it as you come in for a specific role within a specific team and then you get support through the academy because i think the um like obviously (laughs) we're not the first business to have a grad program or or a um, kind of a student program i think of kind of the big end of town where there are lots of big companies that offer you know students while they're doing their degrees part-time work and 
it didn't work for us. And like, do you feel that's just a reality of we're a smaller business? Like we've kind of got, you know, 40 to 50 people in the team at any one time. And is it the, is the part-time thing a failure for us just because we need people in a different way to bigger companies? Like what, what's your feeling there? I think it's, it's a tricky one because we we do have one or two people who were part-time and ended up staying with us for about a year and then finishing up their uni degrees and then moving into full-time. So I think yeah. if they have capacity, it, it can work, but ideally you just want someone who's, yeah, for us as a, as a smaller business, it, it's worked much better having people full-time, fully committed to upskilling in that specific role. Yeah. And I think as well, like rotation grad programs are so common in really big businesses. But again, in like a small to medium business, you don't necessarily have the resources to train someone in one area and then move them on three to six months later. So again, like hiring people for specific roles has really been what's worked for us. I think that's right. And the part-time kind of converts into full-time. Yeah. I could be wrong on this, but I think they were in specific roles and those roles themselves have one manager one set of tasks and it could be kind of done in a part-time capacity I think for us we found that with the part-time work you still have all like all the overheads are still there in terms of the mentoring and the training and the staff meetings and the one-on-ones and kind of hard to get full value for either the employee or the agency and I think we we only took on those people in a part-time capacity because their manager agreed that they were definitely worth the investment and that they were going to guarantee as much as you can guarantee it to stay on and become full-time so you could see the fruits of your investment there. Yeah, that's it. So I think that's definitely, I agree with that, a learning for us was full-time going into into a role. So either you're going into a client services role or you're going into a paid search role or you're going into a paid social role. Um, and I think we've, as with most businesses, I think in the space, it doesn't mean that you're, you know, in three years time, going to be doing the same thing. We've definitely had grads that have moved from one team to the other um, yeah, exactly. for, for, for whatever reason. Um, I think to add to why we did it, I think at the moment, people listening to this pod, obviously there's a there's a shortage of great marketing talent. So it makes sense that when there's a pod titled, you know, <laughs> how to identify, hire and retain <laughs> great talent, you, you listen. It's not, for us, it was very much not about cheap labor. Like it was very much about how do we identify and attract really high quality candidates that will then come through the agency in the next one, two, three, four years. And you touched on it, which is often in the industry, you can kind of get midweights that, um, have kind of floated around a bit, done the kind of year on year on year at different places or just, just don't do things the way we want you to do them. So I think being able to bring young, smart people through and shape them and mentor them in a way that you want has kind of untold benefits. Definitely. And I think providing them with ongoing training and opportunities means they're going to stay interested, engaged and want to continue on in the business as well. But for us, it's definitely been we've already seen the benefits of that 18 months into the program with how capable those first grads are and where they're at in their roles now. So it's really exciting. Yeah, that's it. I think and that maybe that jumps probably jumps a few questions ahead, but what is expectation setting here? Because I don't think it is well it'd be interesting to get your perspective. Like what's realistic in terms of um how long to hire people how long are they in the role where they're probably not as productive as you'd really expect of um, a full-time full-time we, worker? We see the first three to six months as most businesses do with any role, but particularly with our juniors, the first three to six months is such a critical time for seeing if they are as capable as they seem to be in the interview process, getting them up to scratch professionally so that, you know, they know how to send an email, they know how to talk with the team, but also getting them fully across their role and making sure that they're A, happy in that role and B, capable of doing that role. So there's, there is so many unknowns, but when you've got the right structures in place, you can guarantee success. So there has been instances where a role hasn't been the right fit for someone, but there has been resourcing needs in other parts of the agency. So they've been transitioned over there and 
that is the benefit of bringing in the juniors because there is that fluidity in what they're wanting to do as part of their career. A yeah. lot of the time, they're not coming in going, I, I want to be an SEO specialist. They just want to work for a great business and learn from experts or yeah. people around them. So, yeah, if you can provide that environment for them normally, or at least what we've found, they're pretty happy to yeah, jump in and do what's needed. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think that's right. Like it feels from the like you're probably more involved on the day to day with mm. the members of the team, but that and as as you touched on with most roles, like that first three months, you are learning the ropes in many ways. And totally. think when we have midweights come in, they do hit the ground probably a little bit faster. It's kind of skilling up on how we do things that are a bit different to what they have been doing. But generally, you kind of you know if it's a specialist yeah. role, they're kind of adding value straight away. But or within a couple of weeks, but um, definitely feel first three to six months it is a lot of upskilling. Um, but then, then by yeah by that twelve month mark, if you've, you've like we found that we kind of have really high quality candidate staff members yeah. that probably yeah. And yeah, I was going to add to that as well. Like we generally will put them in the grad program for that full year, and normally by the end of that year they are ready to move into a role that's less junior. So. Yeah. The expectation or the timeline is there is, you know, you're going to do all this training, you're going to upskill in your role in the business, et cetera. And then hopefully at that one year mark, you're in a position to get promoted, essentially. Yeah, that's right. I think doing um doing some reading before the pod, it felt for that one to two years per person for a formal development program is kind of about right for grads and it's kind yeah. of what we see. But I think that's very different to when can you expect a grad to add value? I think definitely by that six month mark, we're getting yeah. awesome value out of the out of the team. Um, I'm probably biased, but I think we do a really good job of identifying great talent. I think we've learned so much. What let's maybe talk a little bit about the approach that we take to um, to to kind of moving a pretty large group of candidates through to a smaller number of offers. Yeah, definitely. So we obviously put up ads to start job ads and then <laughs> get those people through. Um, and the way that we filter them rather than a more traditional, just reviewing of the resume and then looking at um, just setting up those one-on-one -on -one phone interviews to initially um, filter people through is we use the predictive index and cognitive tests to get our first batch. Then we go through review resumes um, and Generally, we try and look for people who have had some some kind of feeling or experience within marketing. So whether that is in their degree, whether that's in a family business, whether they've started some kind of small business on the side, just so it's not completely cold. But there are instances where there's brilliant people and you can just yeah. bring them in and train them. But yeah, so we look at their resumes and then we select a group of people based on the COG tests and the predictive index and their resumes to come in and do a group interview. It's normally about 20 people. And in that session, we'll do a few different group exercises. We'll do one-on-one -on -one interviews and then we'll do an actual task as well. And that is with three to four people from Rocket. So those are like a five grad to one rocket ratio just so we're observing them and then from there we provide all of our feedback and select a handful of grads that we're wanting to take on but yep. even when we're hiring just for one role we've found that that group process works really well in the instance of juniors mm. because you're not always looking at hard skills when you're hiring them so yep. there's so many factors at play to work out who is going to be the best hire for you yeah and i think just to put some numbers around that um you'll probably correct me because i'm probably wrong one of these <laughs> but I, it feels that we'll put a job ad up we'll put it in linkedin it might be in seek wherever wherever yeah. it might be different university um notice boards and whatever else we might get a couple of hundred applications yeah. i could i could be wrong but i think that's kind of a number we then through the cog test and that this is going to become probably more specific to the role. If it's a role in client services versus if it's a production yeah. or specialist role, the cog test isn't necessarily, we're not looking for necessarily people that smash it or have super high numbers, but just a range that we think is appropriate for the role in question. Yeah. Um, predictive index is some software that helps us 
align kind of personality traits with with the role so it's kind of there's no right or wrong answer but there's certain roles that have certain features Um, or if someone is a brilliant candidate and they might be a little bit on a certain end of a spectrum in terms of uh, personality just means that they might require a different approach to training or we just know that they're going to have certain characteristics if if they are successful um so yeah probably a couple hundred candidates down to yeah as you said 15 to 25 and then from that maybe it's three or four hires depending on I guess what the needs of the agency are and and, um and there has been um instances where somebody wasn't suited for a particular role and they didn't get that one but then another part of the business was looking to hire someone and because of the predictive index and the cold test and and all of the interviews that were done were able to say actually they would be really suited in that kind of role so able to put their resume forward and so we do have a pool or access to some really great graduates and obviously some of them are going to get snapped up pretty quickly over time so you may not be able to lean on that pool six months later but definitely once you've done that group interview process you do have access to some pretty great talent yeah yeah that's it I think it's um we've got a great agency of people but I reckon we've had to work really hard to get those staff in the sense of what we've talked about historically with a lot of midweights probably coming in talking the talk maybe not working out moving on pretty quickly um etc but definitely feel that the, the the given being able to kind of move a big group of people down to say 20 to no cog test, no personality test aligns with the role. You kind of, what you might be losing in terms of experience and maturity and not having some of the skills that you learn in the workplace, but having just, just great candidates, I think overweights the kind of benefit of hiring someone that might not be such a high quality candidate, but has done the job before. 100%. And I remember from the first group interview, a a few of us stepped away from that and were just completely blown away by the talent that had come in. And we were like, oh my God, we're going to be out of jobs in a few years time. (laughs) They're going to take over. But we were completely blown away. And I think people do underestimate those core skills of just being a great person, having a great attitude and what that can mean for jumping in and doing a role versus yep. getting hiring someone who's got heaps of experience, but whether that actually plays out how you want it to That's it. is such a bet. We, we had to remind ourselves you never want to be the smartest person in the room. And it's it's not a not a problem I've ever had. So after the first <laughs> round. <laughs> yeah. But it kind of ties in we had Alicia Lycos uh, from Red Wolf, who's a kind of talent optimization consultant and business on one of the earlier pods. And she spoke about the head, the heart and the briefcase, which is kind of when they're looking at putting people into organizations, it's those three things. And um, the head is the brain, the heart is kind of the, the willingness to do the job and the desire and the drive and all those things. And the briefcase are kind of the actual skills to do the job and yeah. the head and the heart can't be trained, but the briefcase can. And I think that's what we're finding, you know, as we're 18 months in now, we've got people, full-time employees in Rocket, they've graduated from the program and they're just absolute weapons that... Um, they right. didn't have the briefcase to start with, but you know, three to six months in, you're getting a lot of that knowledge. And by the kind of year to 18 month mark, you're flying. 100%. And it, yeah. yeah, it's just been so amazing to see. And I think on top of that, like it's rewarding for the agency as well, because you've got these young kids who are coming through and then a year in, 18 months in, they're so proud of how far they've come as well. Mm. And they're so stoked that Rocket has supported them, trained them and so on. And so they're really committed to staying with us, which kind of ties into the retention piece. Yeah. Such a big challenge for businesses at the moment with all the poaching that is going on. But I think for us, just making sure we're providing the most supportive, best environment possible means that we're going to retain the talent. Yeah, let's talk about that. So, I mean, first of all, we've, we've touched on it a little bit, but what can juniors bring to the team? Yeah, so. A big thing for us that we've found they they bring to our team is just a level of enthusiasm that is probably unmatched with somebody who's a midweight or a senior. And the fact that they're coming in with little to no experience means that they are not hindered by past experiences. And so you're coming in, it's like a blank slate essentially, and they are so willing to learn 
and eager to grow and develop and be part of the business. And so I think what they bring to the table is just this utter willingness to work hard, learn what they can and be the best they can. And I, I think that does come back to obviously hiring people with the right attitude. But, you know, if you do that and then you provide the structure for them to grow and develop, it's just such a winning combination. Yeah, that's it. I think um, something I find really interesting, and I, you know, it's not to say that you have to be of a certain age group to apply for a grad role and whatever else, but I guess in our instance, probably all of the grads that have come in have been between probably 19 and 23 or something like yeah. that, I guess. Yeah. But um, I kind of, in my notes preparing for this is perspective. Like I find that the agency been around for a while. We've got, um, you know, certain people in their forties and fifties, and we've kind of got a big group of people in their thirties and the agency probably will start into because I think we do a reasonable job of retention, probably starting to skew a little bit older and having, we had Katie Richardson from uni days on um, two weeks ago on the pod. And she was talking about, we're talking about marketing to Gen Z. And she was saying that having <laughs> members of that cohort in your marketing team, help you do a better job of marketing back to. And I think there's something to that, like good marketers should be able to market anything. But the reality is, is that you do also want to have diversity in, in yeah. probably all in all workplaces, but definitely all marketing teams. And I've, fa- I've found that it's just added this new dynamic or perspective to the agency where we've kind of now filled in a part, of, you know, a part of society really that we probably weren't very well represented in um, yeah. just from an and actual perspective viewpoint. Definitely. And I think the thing is, is, you know, they are coming in with fresh ideas. They're being exposed to different ads that we're getting exposed to just because yeah. of general interests so having them working on campaigns or clients um and coming up with ideas is so powerful yeah totally um yeah and i kind of had the second point there hunger which you probably was the first thing you kicked off with which it's like not to say that you know us older uh, members of the company don't have the (laughs) the hunger anymore but i think coming in fresh it's your first or second professional job you yeah. want to hit the ground running, right? And you want to succeed and you want to get promoted and you want to strive and develop. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, I had intelligence. I think we're just hiring, being able to kind of, there. the reality of it is, is that there is a talent shortage in Australia at the moment. And I think it is harder to get people that have already got the industry experience. So yeah. but by being able to go to a group of people that's bigger, um, by being able to do some filtering based on, um, testing prior that will lend itself to the role i think we, you just get potentially really high quality candidates coming out the end of, back end of it definitely and i think to add to that for us at rocket i've noticed such a shift in our culture as well since we hired the juniors so we had a brilliant culture before but it's just really brought this extra vibrancy to the office and our team outings and everything we do because we do have that whole new age bracket essentially yep. working in the agency so yeah it's nice especially coming out of COVID and everyone working from home it's just nice to come into the office and have such a big mix of people but particularly our juniors are in a little bit more than more senior people so yeah. it's just nice to have yeah good vibes in the office essentially. <laughs> um, I think we've talked a lot about all the good stuff what are some of the learnings things that, that could have done better things to watch out for um, things that aren't as good as they seem, lessons yeah. that we can potentially help others to to kind of avoid? I think the biggest thing for me when I was preparing as well for today's chat was I was reflecting on the challenges we've had in some of the professional development areas. So things that are second nature to people who are maybe 25 plus who've been working professionally for a while versus people who haven't even worked in a professional environment at all, I always thought that bridging that gap would be easier than it is. And yeah. so the the biggest challenge that stands out to me is the fact that you've got a whole generation of uni students who've been working or attending uni virtually. And now they're coming into a workplace, they, they maybe have interviewed virtually as well. And so they've really missed out on interacting with other humans, doing group assignments in person or, you know, interviewing in person, all those things 
make such a big difference to how somebody then comes into a business and is ready to present internally. So mm. how are they, what are they wearing to work? How are they emailing and so on? And that's just such a tricky thing to train, especially when juniors are maybe not as comfortable or used to getting feedback. So how do you make that feedback not mm. personal? And it's just, this is objectively how we do things here. Yeah. So it's been a big challenge for sure. That's it. I think it's um it's easy to underestimate the lack of knowledge in do, totally. doing the things that we've learned how to do over the years. And so I think if you we were talking about it before we started recording, like if you think that hiring really good, capable talent and dropping them into your business and just waiting six months and you're going to have superstars, it's just not how it works. You have to invest heavily in terms of mentoring and training and one-on-ones and um, development plans. And I think that feedback thing, right, is so critical because obviously some of the some of the um, the grads will have worked professionally before and have gone through those you know that yeah. feedback process before and others just simply haven't definitely um, and I think you're right having the resources in place to make sure you are giving that feedback and you know working on their development plan and and just you just got to work so closely with them every single day and I think it I'd never want anyone to underestimate how much work does have to go into building them up to be that kind of self like functioning in fully functioning employee who's yeah. able to just you know run their own day-to-day interact and deliver their work and so on so yeah yeah it's definitely a challenge what what are, what other challenges have we found probably getting juniors comfortable coming into the office which probably lends itself to the COVID situation as well everyone's being so comfortable at home so setting that expectation from the beginning that you need to be in the office and it's because you're in a training phase and you need to be learning off the team and getting exposure to you know even if you're sitting in the office James and having a sales phone call with someone overhearing that conversation I think we all underestimate how much just overhearing things how much you learn from that so I think setting that expectation from the beginning I think it really definitely took some of the graduates back a little bit when they were like oh okay you're expecting me to come in four days a week I thought I was going to be working from home most of the time because we're a digital marketing agency um so that expectation setting another challenge has been getting them comfortable with feedback which probably loops more into the first part again but yeah, making sure that they know why you're giving feedback and understand the benefits of it and that we're all on the same team. We want you to succeed. Um, so feedback's a massive one. And lastly, the biggest challenge we've had is just making sure that juniors ask us questions because I think they come into it either maybe they think they know everything, which is great but on the other end of the spectrum they might be really scared of asking a question because it might seem silly or they want to show you that they know what they're doing and that they can do the job so really training them to say okay you need to ask me questions because it's a way of avoiding mistakes that might be more detrimental um but also this is so that you can learn and grow so creating that environment of learning growing ask questions we're all here for you it's so important yeah, and I think that's excellent. It's kind of excellent advice for any employee, but particularly yeah. um, grads. But I think just to and set that expectation early that, A, this is why you're in the office four days a week. B, um, we're going to give you feedback all the time. And it's not because we're picking on you. It's because we want you to get better. And the feedback will be constructive, but also positive. Um, yeah. And then third, smart people ask questions. <laughs> ask exactly. lots of questions. No, no one knows everything. Just coming back to the hybrid policy for, for listeners, We've probably talked about it on some some other episodes, but not all. We we've made the decision to be permanently hybrid. We feel that um, total remote doesn't work for the type of agency work that Rocket wants to do. Um, but we also identify and agree that there's so many benefits of work from home and a more flexible approach. And as part of that policy, different roles are in the in the office um, for more or less days each week and then depending on tenure in the business you're in more or less so um there's a a small number of roles in the business where it's completely optional to come in except for i think it's once a quarter for planning days and things like the christmas party then for certain roles if you're in a um 
a specialist position and you've been doing it for four years I think you're in one or two days a week yeah. um, but then for the grads one of the things that Rocket and I think most businesses around the world struggled with during kind of lockdowns was the ability to, to train people remotely it's just not the same and so for all of the academy members up until a certain point they're in the office four days a week and um, we've, we've we're kind of unapologetic about that which is if we truly want to get the best out of you and if you want to you know, grow through your career, the best way to do it is to be in here learning from each other and from us. And so I think that's kind of pretty important. It's a good good, good thing you've you've mentioned there, Britt. Um, in terms of resources and training, just maybe talk to that for, for, for a minute or so. Yeah, so we've found that training, I mean, you have your classic like certifications and so on, but I think in the instance of our agency, we've found that doing those certifications and online-based training doesn't necessarily get the best out of all, we doesn't put the grads in the position we want them to be in. So all of our training, or at least 95% of it, is focused on one-on-one -on -one with your direct manager, one-on-one -on -one with me as the head of the academy, but then also specific mentoring and training with specialists within the business so that we know that every graduate is at the same level of base knowledge of what Rocket sells um, and all of the areas that we specialize in. So I think just leaning on the specialists within your business and leaning on other team members means that you're able to do the training that your business requires and get that graduate up and running to the level you want rather than outsourcing it to some online training. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. In terms of, um, I guess, that training element, um, feed, we've touched on feedback. Like what, what is the best way to give feedback, do you feel? I found that the best and most effective way to give feedback to juniors is instantly. So that means if I pick on, if I pick up on something in a meeting, I'll just send them a message and say, hey, do you want to chat for two minutes when that meeting's done and give them the feedback? If I see an email that's done really well, I'll reply to it and reinforce that behavior. Or if yeah. I see something that could have been done differently, I'll send them an email and let them know. But that instantaneous feedback is so critical because mm -hmm. if you let it build up over time, then they're not going to be able to improve and it might be too far gone. Yeah. But also on the flip side, if you see repeated behavior, it means that you've got an opportunity to have a bigger conversation and get to the core of it. Yeah. Like I think we've, it's probably took me, too many years than it should have to understand this but it, you're, you're doing a disservice to the staff member by not giving them feedback Definitely. like you think you think that by kind of sugarcoating staff and skipping over staff and maybe hoping the behavior will change you, that you're kind of trying to be nice and all you're doing is um making sure that they're they're moving more slowly through their development than they otherwise would which is kind of exactly. it's kind of take takes time having those tough conversations where you know you either have to let someone go or you have to put them on you know some kind of yeah that's it management plan but yeah definitely instant feedback is the way to go yeah and i think it's, I, it, we probably um could have touched on it earlier on in the pod but i think the thing that's been really interesting with the academy for us is that it's really hard to get talent in Australia at the moment. I think if you'd asked me 18 months ago, two years ago, when we were, we were thinking of doing this, um, what will work, what won't work, I think I would have thought that would hire a lot of people and a small number would kind of still be with us after mm -hmm. 18 months. But the retention in the academy, retention slash people that have actually got through probation is higher in the academy than it is more generally with general hires at Rocket. So I think it's fascinating that... Um, this kind of it's almost a misconception i think that young people are chopping and changing jobs for a small salary increase and are disloyal and don't want to stick it out i think from our experience so far we've um we're, we're getting great retention in the academy which i think is part of it is making sure we're very discerning with who we offer roles to um then giving them great training development growth um, a good culture helps but yeah I think it is it's um that was something I probably would have been quite concerned about at the time but it hasn't come to fruition which is which is positive definitely I think it has been surprising again because it was originally a pilot the retention of the program and I know that I often speak about this with other team members around how can we make sure we do retain them but it hasn't mm. been 
yeah, I think just naturally having those structures in place and investing heavily in resources to train them has meant that mm. they're set up for success and we're retaining them. That's it. Excellent, Britt. Well, thanks for coming on. I think if anyone who's looking to kind of hire is struggling to hire great marketers and is looking to how to identify a hire and then retain great young marketing talent, there's definitely lots of food for thought. Um, I always ask this question, what's the one piece of marketing advice that you'd give to an in-house marketer? Mine would be, if you're not already hiring juniors, definitely put it on your radar and look to hire uni graduates or people at uni or you know younger people without experience. But yeah, hiring juniors, we're just reaping the benefits of mm. you know this program that we've started and the other piece of advice would be you know when you if you do already have juniors in your business know that anything that's probably second nature to you is probably not to them so don't underestimate the simplicity the simple things that you have to train um and do that early on so that the expectation set and you know you're not having to go back six or 12 months into it and yeah. try and correct behaviors. Yeah, that's it. Excellent. Britt, thanks for coming on the pod. Thanks for having me.